Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game into the video. Let us discuss the Xbox One's ES RAM further. Now, there's also an article that's accompanying this. You can find the link down below. And that's not only going to uh, point to the sources of these quotes that I'm about to um, tell you guys, but in addition to that, it's going to point to some um, other sources that I'm going to be discussing as we go through the uh, video. So the Xbox One's ES RAM has, of course, been a source of contention for a long time. Now, I really don't need to go too much into it, but there's been two concerns with the X1. The first is the GPU being inferior, and to be honest with you, it's black and white. If you look at the raw numbers, it's just a simple case of it's not as powerful. The main cause of contention, however, isn't the isn't the GPU. It's actually the ES RAM, and a few developers have even pointed out that it's a big problem. We'll go into that more in a moment. So, famous Mortimer, who is an industry insider, he speaks to a lot of games developers and all the other jazz, and he said, and "I quote: I don't get what obsession is with MS fanboys wanting a more powerful machine." I'm not using the word fanboys. This is his words, not mine. It's not happening. Who cares? There are Xbox fans who think ES RAM is a mystical thing, but all it is is a cumbersome bottlenecking memory. But it's there, so it has to be special. When I hear people say devs need to utilize it, ES RAM better, it's like saying they need to, help to do the most basic thing again. ES RAM isn't rocket science, it isn't complicated, it's just a pain in the ass, that's it. End quote. So, um, this comes to us after a game, um, what is it called, PopCap initially dodged the question of Garden Warfare was it going to be 1080p on the Xbox One. Now, there was a long series of quotes, I'm not going to bother to read them all out, but essentially speaking, it said on next generation consoles, players can experience all games on 1080p, some rendered natively, others are upscales, either way they look stunning, blah 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 blah. Later on, it was confirmed, okay, it's 900p, and once again, of course, the internet started to ignite with the passionate fumes of love, also known as people defending their consoles. And, uh, you know, okay, let me, let me go over his quote again, right? Um, first of all, the Xbox One, you know, I don't like the word fanboys, I really don't. Um, but I'm just going to use his words, fanboys, right? These are people who really want, you know, to defend the machine to the hilt. And he's basically saying it's not happening. It's Who cares? What he's basically saying is, that, you know what? It's not the be-all and end-all if your console's not the most powerful. But there is a lot of um, a thing right now where people are, like, looking at ES RAM and they think it's going to really open up. It's going to improve massively over time. And it will but it won't make it so it's a parity. It's almost like the developers have to kind of figure out how to best utilize a really small, limited amount of space that's very fast, and it's not difficult to utilize this. That's the important thing. It's not difficult in kind of like saying, oh, let me give you guys an example. To be honest, I can't think of an example. My, my brain is completely blank from lack of sleep, so that was absolutely crap. But still, all he's basically saying is that, look, it's not difficult to understand how to use it. It's obvious how to use it, but it's just not convenient, and basically it's a handicap. That's it. It's just difficult. It's a pain in the butt. Simple as. Now... This has been, of course, a contention, and I've seen um, on the RGT Facebook right now, uh, so that's uh, facebook.com slash redgamingtech, there's been some back and forth between fans. I've not really gotten involved in it myself, to be honest, because it just doesn't do me any good to do so, to be honest. Um, you know, and a lot of people seem to think that there is, like, hidden potential inside the Xbox Ones. You know, like, there's a hidden die in, or uh, the Xbox One's got, like, a stacked die, and there's, like, hidden GPU performance inside. It's not. Microsoft have said no. But I've also gotten messages, um, on both the channel, on Facebook, and whatever else, and, you know, effectively speaking, and I'm going to paraphrase, but basically they've said... You know, should I buy the Xbox One? It isn't as powerful as the PS4. So, and here's the thing. Um, I think this comes back to the who cares that he pointed out. 
It's like, look, okay, you're going to be running the game at low resolution, but that's not really the point necessarily. Should you buy the get? Should you buy the console because you like the games that are on it? And of, of course, most people are going to look at the cross-platform games. And clearly, if that's the only thing that you are interested in, if all you are interested in right now are the cross-platform games on both systems, you want a console because if you don't want a console necessarily and you just want to play the cross-platform games, I'm here to tell you the PC is the way to go. If you don't believe me, look at the recent videos that I've put out with Crisis 3, um, Metro 2033, running at 1440p. I downscaled them for the purpose of the video, but you can see right there I'm running at uh, 1440p at good frame rates. Now, of course, I'm running a very expensive graphics card in that video, but you can get very good results at 1080p, um, you know, 60 frames a second, much better graphics than the consoles. But that isn't the point, is it? No, it's the exclusive games. It's the entire experience. And that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get to here. In other words, you've got to look at the exclusive titles on both systems. You've got to look at the overall experience on both systems and use that to judge whether you want an Xbox One, whether you want a PS4. And Microsoft are doing their best right now to improve the Xbox One. This isn't me defending the system. I'm more of a PC gamer, if I'm totally honest. I own a PS4, I don't own an Xbox One right now. I will buy one. Why? Because the games are looking quite cool on it. There are a couple I really do want. I w you know, I was even intended to buy one until just recently, but the reason I haven't bought one is, quite honestly speaking, there have been other costs on the channel and, well, have to buy recording equipment and other bits first because otherwise it just doesn't go well for the channel. So, yeah. Um, but by the by, the Xbox One is going to improve graphically, just like the PS4. Why? Because... They're going to understand how to utilize it better. The game engine is going to improve. The develop the drivers are going to improve. The development processes are going to improve. Bug finding is going to improve. And basically speaking, they're going to learn tri uh, tricks. Tricks. I'm sorry, God, you can't speak with low, the lack of sleep. Um, tricks and tips to improve their ways of programming on the system, just like the PS3. The PS3 was an absolute pain in the butt to program for, and. The PS4 wasn't exactly easy either because of the auxiliary processors that ran along with the main CPU, the Emotion Engine. Now, it's easy to look at the PS2, and we're going back a couple of generations now, and we could say the PS2 was definitely the winner of that, gen of that console war. Right? It's just, it's not even a question. We can argue what console has the better games, but we can't really argue that it was the winner. But if you were look at, to look at actual raw performance of the system, it was easily the inf most inferior. The original Xbox was considered to be more powerful, had a lot more RAM, a uh, better GPU, and of course the GameCube was just a beast. Uh, if you want an example of that, look at Resident Evil 4 on the PS2 and compare it to the GameCube version. The GameCube version definitely looks sharper and better quality so once again um i've wanted to point this piece of news out once again i've also pointed uh, down below to the description which does indeed have these relevant links in it so the basic message that i'm going to point out right now is it looks like for the foreseeable future unless something really strange happens the PS4's graphics are going to be ahead of the Xbox One with cross-platform titles. It's that simple. I don't think it's going to be changing. I don't necessarily think the famous Mortimer here is revealing anything else that has been a mystery to quite a few people. I think a lot of people knew this already, to be honest. But what he is saying is, look, ultimately, should it influence your decision to buy the console? Not necessarily, if you like the games on it. And that's pretty much all there is to it, folks. Anyway, I'm going to get going and hopefully sleep quite well tonight and to make up for the absolute awful crappy night's sleep that I had yesterday. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.